Hey everyone, welcome to episode 7 of BCBA Tay. Uh, this is going to be a couple part series, two to three probably, of episodes going over risk factors to autism. So if you've ever wondered what causes autism, uh, join the group. Everybody is kind of wondering what causes autism. I think what we've identified first um, and definitely is that it's a neurological disorder. Um, it causes developmental impairments and we've gone over the diagnosis and all of that. But what we don't really know is this specifically causes this, right? This set of symptoms is specifically caused by this. What they have been able to do is identify multiple risk factors that are associated with the outcome of autism. Typically the way that this is done, and actually every article <laughs> that I've done, uh, every research article that I've looked into, uh, they take a group of children a group of children that have been diagnosed with autism, and then what we would call a control group, a group of children who have not been diagnosed with autism, and they see if there are similarities across the outcome. So they might look into, is this a, a particular risk factor? Does the group that has a confirmed diagnosis of autism have a higher diagnostic rate with this set of conditions, such as like if mom was a smoker while she was pregnant, or if dad is a certain age, or um, if they are this certain ethnicity, are there things like that that would cause this group of children that have an ASD diagnosis to be higher than the control group, which are children who do not have an ASD diagnosis. These are kind of the studies that I'm going to go over with you today. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to talk about prenatal risk factors. So this includes like mom's medical history, potentially dad's medical history, things that are happening basically within the womb prior to birth. Once we get to birth, uh, we talk about like natal, perinatal, uh, postnatal. <laughs> There's lots of different terms. I'm, I don't know. I'm not an OBGYN, but um, or a pediatrician, but there's a lot of words that talk about basically like right before birth, birth, and then immediately following. That'll be the next episode, episode eight. Today, like I said, we're talking about basically prenatal factors. What are the contributing factors from mom, from dad, and during pregnancy that have been associated with a high risk of autism diagnosis later in life, okay? One other thing I'll say before I start jumping into these studies is that you can find a lot of these studies online. Um, some of them you have to pay for. So if I don't go into great detail about an article, it's probably because the article itself is going to cost like 35 to $40 for the article. And I don't make anything from this podcast. So I'm not going to spend 35 to $40 just to get the article. I'm pulling just from their abstract or basically their summary that I found online. The other thing I will say is that I did not vet these articles to see like, uh, did they, did they use proper collection? Did they, uh, did they confirm the diagnosis the same way? Did they, um, uh, basically I don't, I didn't, uh, go through and check the quality of all of these journals. I'm just saying, this is what I found. These are scholarly articles that have been published in journals across the world. Um, but I'm not going through and saying like, this is a top tier research article. We should absolutely believe everything they say. I'm just presenting the facts as, as how I've seen them. All right, let's get started. So I'm going to go study by study. Most of these names I cannot pronounce, but I'm going to try my very best to tell you who wrote the article and kind of what they summarized. Study one was done in 2023 and included 2,000 mothers over a three-year period in Pennsylvania. They looked at, uh, out of that, out of those uh, 2,000 mothers, there were 102 children or 4.3% that scored at risk at the age of three for being diagnosed with autism. So I don't think they actually confirmed um, an autism diagnosis, but they scored high enough to be considered at risk at three years of age. In this article, uh, here were the factors that they identified as confirmed risk factors for this group of children. Okay, number one, lower social support. Number two, stress on the parents and particularly mom. This is a mom-based study. Three, depression, a diagnosis of depression for mom. Four, trouble paying for basic needs. These are kind of all going to kind of lump together, right? Like if you're depressed, you likely have a lower social support, not necessarily, but you're probably also stressed. And if you have trouble paying for basic needs, it's going to exasperate the rest of those symptoms as well. A mental illness diagnosis of any kind. So depression was higher, but a mental illness uh, diagnosis of any kind put the child at higher risk. 
and a use of antidepressants. So you're going to see a couple of mental health factors kind of pop up there. This article was done by, yeah, I'm not going to try and pronounce it, but you can spell it S-Z-N-A-J-D-E-R and another author that I also cannot pronounce, K-J-E-R-V-L-F-F. And like I said, that was done in 2023. And that was the Journal of Psychiatry and Psychiatric um, something or other, epidemiology. I think so. I can't read my own writing. So interesting there, they were all mental health factors, basically environmental or, or socio socioeconomic, um, but also mental health related. Interesting study. Study number two was also done in 2023, or published in 2023, probably done last year or so. It looked over 670 mothers, 103 of them having children with autism. Okay, so 13% of the mothers had at least one child with ASD, a confirmed diagnosis. Again, I don't know how they how they confirmed diagnosis. I don't know if they just turned in a sheet of paper that said, yep, they have it, or if they tested them themselves, didn't look into that. Uh, but here were the factors that they identified as confirmed risk factors. Number one is that the mother and father were less educated than the control group. This does not mean that they were less intelligent. It just means that they had less education than the control group. Mom having any any disease during di dur man, during pregnancy, they were two and a half times more likely to have an ASD diagnosis. So mom having any kind of disease at all increased their rate by two and a half. Number three, diabetes during pregnancy. If they had gestational diabetes, three times higher likelihood of being at risk for a or having an ASD diagnosis. And type 2 diabetes was 11 times higher. So type 2 diabetes in this study, they were 11 times more likely to have an ASD diagnosis. Some of the other factors that they assessed but were not considered to be a contributing factor. So they looked at these variables. They were not considered factors. Administration of folic acid, calcium, and iron during the pregnancy, any kind of like hospital admission, um, being RH negative. So talking about blood type there, premature labor in the cesarean section. So they evaluated to see like if they had a C-section, were they at higher risk? And it was determined, no, not in this study that was not considered to be a high risk. This was from the Middle East uh, Current Psychiatric Psychiatry Journal. So you can find it there. Interesting though, you're going to hear a lot about diabetes as a risk factor. Well, I'll do a summary here at the end, but that's a big one. Study number three, this was done in Bangladesh, also published in 2023, so very recent. Uh, it's the main author is Aline, A-L-I-M at all. There's a lot of different authors in this one. And it's the Journal of Current Medical Research and Opinion. They identified two factors. This must have been an article I would have had to pay for because I don't have a whole lot of detail on this one. But the two main risk factors that they found, number one was diabetes and two was thyroid abnormalities. So there's that diabetes again, and then thyroid abnormalities. Again, I don't know what that means. I don't know if they're talking about T3, TH being high or low, any abnormalities. I uh, was not able to look into that, but if you have a subscription to that one, I'd love to see it. I'd love to read that article and see specifically what they're talking about. Another factor in that study that they looked at that was not confirmed as a risk factor was the age of the parents. And you're going to hear that come up in some other studies where it was confirmed as a risk factor. So I think um, age of parents is one that could be looked at a little bit more in depth with a higher quality, um, a high quality assessment to kind of see if, if there is, in fact, a risk associated there. I know when I was going through my graduate program, oh, man, I don't even want to say how long ago that was because it's really going to age me. But um, I remember that the age of the father was considered a really big risk factor then. And that would have been, I mean, I was reading these articles in 2013, 14, 15. Um, so when those articles were done, it would have been within the last 10 years. So it's interesting that uh, it's still something that's being looked at, but it sounds like it hasn't necessarily been confirmed. Study number four is from the American Journal of Translational Research. This was published in 2022. The authors here, I probably won't say these correctly either, but Liu, Wang, Lang, and Yao. Uh, 2022. So some of the factors that they identified with their study, again, this must have been one I had to pay for. I don't have like the method or how many parents they looked at, anything like that, but their factors were listed. So 
maternal depression, they had an 87% increased risk. So if the mom had a diagnosis of depression, 87% increased risk of autism diagnosis. Maternal diabetes, 62% increased risk of autism. Polycystic ovary syndrome or PCOS, 59%. Maternal gestational diabetes, there's that diabetes again, 42%. Obesity, 36%, which, you know, if you're, uh, if we're looking at obesity, it's likely that diabetes is co-occurring. If, I don't know whether they just determine these in isolation or if they were ever co-occurring, if they look at those as co-variables or whatever, but um, obesity, hypertension. So again, there also, if you're, if you're seeing obesity, it's likely to be not always, but sometimes paired with hypertension. That was an increased risk by 35%. Any type of maternal infection during pregnancy was an increased risk of 30%. And then uh, the last one that was listed was maternal exposure to a pesticide. I actually had to look this one up. It was like PPDDE. Um, and after some research, I found out that that was a pesticide. It didn't list, I didn't write down the um, percentage there, but I went from highest risk factor to the lowest. So it would have been less than 30%. Um, okay. That was study four. So again, our top ones here, maternal depression and then diabetes were the top two from that one. So we've already heard those a couple of times. This next study, number five, um, was a current, it's from current opinion Psychi psychiatry journal. Uh, this was published in 2021 by Katz, K-A-T-Z. Uh, Leichenberg, L-E-I-C-H-E-N, Berg, B-E-R-G. And then the last name, ugh, not going to try and say it, but it's K-D-E-V-Z-O-N. And this was actually a literature review. I love literature reviews. <laughs> They're so nice. Uh, because basically what I was talking about at the very beginning of these is that I didn't vet these articles to see like if they were high quality, if they confirmed the diagnosis, like how do we know these kids actually had ASD? Like all these things, uh, these researchers did all of that for us and determined like they're gonna they're gonna toss out all the ones that they are saying yeah, but their their quality of research wasn't that great, so we can't necessarily rely on them. So anytime you can find like a uh, a review of a grouping of other articles, those are the ones you want to look at because you're gonna save yourself a lot of trouble. As long as you're not writing a research paper, these are the ones you want to go for. Anyway. So this one was a review of metabolic risk factor articles. So basically every single article associated, and I think it was within like a 10 year period, I'll go over that here in a second, but basically they specifically wanted to look at articles, um, research articles that had been published about the review of metabolic risk factors to autism. So prenatal, metabolic status of mom, um, and risk factors. So they did vigorous vetting of articles. There was 562 publications that they looked at. They ended up with 155. I have looked at 17 or a little bit more than that. Uh, I've pulled 17 to review with you guys over the three different episodes I've found so far. They went through 562. So that's another reason why I like these so much. But they ended up with 155 studies to look at. They also looked at 11 additional studies for reference and context, 12 um, for maternal metabolic syndrome and offspring development. And then all of these studies were from 2010 to 2020. So pretty recent research. Um, when you're looking at studies like this, it's, it's good to look at the year because we're continuously updating everything, all of our technology, our standards of publication, all of these things. So not to say that a study that was conducted in the 1990s doesn't have any, any weight, uh, but the more more current the research, you're looking at like more current diagnostic standards. We're looking at the DSM-5 likely instead of four. I would just recommend that if you're looking at studies to get your information that you look within like the last 10 years to kind of get your information from, and that's going to give you the newest research that's out. Okay, this study, they pulled from seven different geographic locations, Denmark, Canada, Sweden, California, Finland, Western Australia, Australia, and Norway. So quite a few different locations globally. And here were their risk factors. So number one, again, this they were just looking at metabolic. So this is not going to include like socioeconomic status, education, things like that. We're just looking at metabolic issues. The first one that they found was obesity or pre-pregnancy weight. 
was the highest risk factor. So if mom was obese prior to becoming pregnant, that was the number one risk factor. Number two was gestational weight gain. So if mom gained a lot of weight during pregnancy, that was number two risk factor rated across all these articles. Number three, pre-gestational diabetes. Four, gestational diabetes. Five, gestational hypertension or preeclampsia was number five. So again, you're going to hear a lot about metabolic disorders here. You're going to hear a lot about um, basically the, the overall health of mom. Um, we have a lot, I'm a mom and I, it, it's a lot of stress on us to be healthy when we're pregnant. So if, you, if you're listening to this and you're feeling like, man, that was me, I had diabetes or I had a lot of pregnancy weight. These are not saying that you necessarily caused it, right? I don't want that to come across here. What I am saying is that if you, uh, if you're looking for what are the risk factors, how can I, what, what, what can we do here? I would say we've already identified a really common relationship between the overall health of mom and the outcome of ASC. So uh, I'm not here to talk about what would be healthy or what is not healthy, just reviewing the research. But I just wanted to stop real quick and say, like, this is not a, not an, uh, an episode to say, oh, mom did something wrong. You know, she was obese and so it caused autism. These are just commonly associated risk factors. And so just wanted to point that out before we keep going. Number six, study number six. This was in the Association of Prenatal Exposure to, oh, not a journal. This is the name of it. Uh, this is an Association of Prenatal Exposure to Anti-Seizure Medication to ASD and Intellectual Disability. So again, not looking at external variables, not looking at socioeconomic. This is specifically seeing if a mom taking anti-seizure medication while she was pregnant increased the risk of autism to their child. This was published in 2022. Authors here, I'm going to have to spell them. B-J-O-R-K is the first author. The second one is Z-O-E-G-A. And the third one, L-E-I-N-O. Uh, it's either an R or an E or an N. I have really bad handwriting. ENT at all. So there was quite a few others and it's in the journal. It's basically JAMA neurology, J-A-M-A -A neurology, if you want to look it up. So they looked at 25,000 children exposed to anti-seizure medications. So these were prescribed and taken by mom during pregnancy. Um, and the drugs that they looked at specifically that indicated a risk was, man, there's so many words I'm mispronouncing today. Um, Valproate, topiramate, if that sounds right, and oh, duotherapy. So having like one or more different anti-seizure medications at the same time. If they had those, the finding was that they were two to four times more likely to develop a child neurodevelopmental disorder. So autism basically falls into that category. So the factor here was they identified a, a correlation between a mom receiving anti-seizure medications specifically for those two medications or and or duo therapies, the child was two to four times more likely to be diagnosed with autism. Study number seven, maternal infection was reviewed here. Um, it was in 2021 that it was published in an autism research article. So autism research was the journal uh, author T-I-O-L-E-C-O -E et al. They reviewed 36 studies and confirmed that infection uh, was a factor, basically. Uh, that was the only factor that they looked at, and they did confirm that it ha the mom having any kind of infection while she was pregnant um, did confirm the risk. Now, what they also were testing was like, does it matter what the infection is, or does it matter when during pregnancy the infection, occur infection occurs? And they were not able to identify any specific risk, risk factors there. So they were not able to say, if the mom gets an infection within the first trimester, it increases risk by whatever, or, you know, in the third trimester, nothing like that was confirmed. They also didn't list a flake, or they said it was a non-factor, basically, depending on what type of infection, just that they were, they had an infection and that increased the risk of autism. Study number eight is uh, basically on maternal health from 2021. It's Kodesh is the author at all. And it was in Psychological Medicine, Journal of Psychological Medicine. 
And this was over looking at children in Israel from 1997, born in 1997 through 2008. Again, published in 2021, but it was a review of children born during that time. It looked at 80,187 individuals, so quite a few people. Here were their factors. The first one was metabolic issues such as hypertension. The second was, I can't pronounce the word, but basically um, issues and diseases of the genitals, basically. Three, psychiatric disorders, namely depression, was the top one mentioned. And then number four, mother, mothers of children. Oh, this was just an, another factor that they listed. Was that mothers of children with ASD were less likely to attend prenatal care appointments. So, I mean, that just really lends itself to like, obviously, um, these mothers with children with autism are, are probably experiencing a higher rate of stress just due to the additional need of having a child with autism. They are less likely to receive prenatal care. So then your question would be, does that then increase the risk of the next child having autism just due to the lack of prenatal care for the next one? I, I don't know if that wasn't listed here, but that, that's a thought. Um, it's just interesting that they were able to confirm that, that mothers that already have a child at home with ASD were less likely to receive or attend prenatal care for the subsequent pregnancies. Study nine. I don't have much information on this one. They just had a summary of prenatal risk factors that I not even list. I didn't even, oh, yes, I did. I have it, one second. Okay, so study nine was 2000, uh, published in 2021, the Journal of Child Psychology and Psychi Psychiatry, Psychiatry. <laughs> I think I'd be able to say all this. It looked at 115 cases um, of pairs of twins. So the, I love twin studies, they're really interesting to me. 115 cases of pairs, and then they had 16 control pairs of twins. So again, 115 uh, with autism, autism, one or both of the twins had autism, and then they had a control set, and they typically try to make them the same. So like if they have so many white, then they would also have so many white in the control group, uh, you know, same kind of factors there. I didn't read through to, to figure out, to make sure that how they, equi uh, how they made sure that they were equivalent there, but... The factors that they found were one, hypertension, two, uterine bleeding, and three, exposure to antibiotics, which makes you think the mothers that were at risk for infection that we've heard a couple of times, was it actually the infection or was it the antibiotics that potentially put them at higher risk? Uterine bleeding, we've heard that a couple of times and we've certainly heard the hypertension a few times too. So just from just from these uh, nine studies that we've looked at today, what have been our top our top pieces here. So let's take a review. Depression was listed in three of these, including mental illness. So depression was listed um, or depression medication was listed at least and confirmed in three different studies and specifically listed as a mental health, but called out as depression specifically. I didn't read anything that specifically said schizophrenia, um, anxiety disorder, anything like that, but depression, they were specifically um, identifying that one metabolic issues five times in these studies, hypertension and um, different diabetes, type two, um, gestational diabetes. So another high risk factor that was in five out of the nine articles. And that doesn't, I mean, those are just the ones that even looked at that as a factor. Number three, infection. Two of them talks about um, exposure to infection during pregnancy, anti-seizure meds, was another one that was that was listed that was only one time stress low social support economic status was also listed that was just in one one review that i looked at exposure to pesticides was listed just in one article thyroid abnormalities just in one article and then our last risk factor that was mentioned was genital diagnosis of like or and or i included pcos and if you include the um, the bleeding as well. And that, that would have been three separate articles that listed that, but they weren't specifically talking about the exact same thing. So uterine bleeding is probably not con considered or classified as the same thing as PCOS. So definitely um, some common things there were maternal depression, maternal exposure to either infection and or um, oh, antibiotics, and then three metabolic issues, so either hypertension, preeclampsia, uh, 
gestational diabetes or type two diabetes where it was mentioned quite a few times as well. So those are the highest ones that I saw as I am continuing to do research for the next step, which is like birth factors, complications at birth, um, early stages of life. So in the first couple of months of life, what are the risk factors associated there? I just kept finding more and more research on prenatal risk factors. So I'll continue to review those in our second episode that's reviewing this. Um, but just keep all these things in mind. Again, they're not confirming that it's not to say that if you have gestational diabetes, that your child will have autism. But I also think it's helpful to know that you've heard a couple of these things. So if you have depression um, and then you also get diagnosed with gestational diabetes, it's probably a good thing to start looking out for some of those early signs of autism that I talked about in one of my other episodes. Um, just be aware, be looking for those things. That way you can start seeking help pretty quickly. And if you have any questions about that process, um, hopefully my podcast will have all the information that you need, but if you, if not, let me know and I'll see what else I can get you to help support along that process as well. Thanks for listening today. I know that the information today was kind of heavy going through research reviews. So thanks for hanging in there with me. And next episode, we'll be going over complications at birth or right around birth that are associated with risk factors of a diagnosis with autism. I'll see you again soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe um, to the YouTube channel so you can get all the updates there.